All right, all right. Welcome to the Olympic Coaching Podcast today, guys. And so today we're talking about a fun topic of strength versus hypertrophy training. And so I'm definitely going off of a few notes here because I wanted to make sure I hit everything for you guys to be able to compare the two because aren't they the same thing? A lot of people think that they're the same thing, but they're not exactly the same. But the difference does matter for you depending on your goals. And a lot of people have a misunderstanding of the difference between the two. And so by empowering you with knowing the difference between the two, it can help you know how you need to prioritize your training, know how you can benefit uh, your own physique and your own training and your own fitness today. And so let's dive into strength conditioning. But before we, uh, before we do that, I want to just give a shout out to all the people who have invested in me in the past. I'm really thankful for the experiences that I've had working with different strength and conditioning coaches and working in different sports and getting an understanding of a bigger picture of the difference between, you know, trying to get bigger and stronger between trying to be able to go for longer and having a good endurance and understanding the different types of training through the NSCA, National Strength and Conditioning Association, along with CrossFit and precision nutrition and so I just love the the breadth of experience I've been able to have and the different athletes and different individuals I've been able to interact with throughout my career that have really benefited uh, my own understanding and so I'm not trying to say I know everything I'm, I'm definitely learning along the way constantly and I will be for the rest of my career for the rest of my life but um, man I love getting to help people and bring people along the way so whether um, I've had an opportunity to mentor um different coaches in the past or getting to coach individuals. That's a big passion of mine is just empowering you with the awareness, with the knowledge that's going to help you make the informed decisions you need to make for your best life, for your best possible fitness outcome. Uh, So we're all on our journey journey together. And so if you want me to come alongside you, man, I would love to take that chance to come alongside you as a coach, whether you're an athlete or, or just a normal uh, normal individual trying to improve your life, trying to take those next action steps. I'm here to help you as an online or an in-person coach. And so I love doing that. But today, diving into strength versus hypertrophy training. So let's define them real quick. What's the difference? Well, strength, if you're going to define this like really simply, it's just the ability to generate force. Um, That ability allows you to move yourself or an external object or load, and it gives your body greater resistance to withstand forces that are placed on it um, that could possibly get your body into a risky position. So it allows your body to protect itself by being stronger. Um, Hypertrophy is increasing the size of muscle fibers themselves. So like every muscle you have is made up of a bunch of little fibers called muscle fibers. And increasing the size of those is called hypertrophy. Um, That's not to be confused with hyperplasia, which is actually adding new muscle fibers. That happens to a really small degree. Um, But hypertrophy is increasing the size of the fibers that are already there. So why does that even matter? Why does strength versus hypertrophy matter? Well, not everyone wants to get huge. (laughs) Not everyone wants to get bigger. Not everybody wants hypertrophy. Everybody would like to be lean, but not everyone wants to get super huge, like having really large, like a typical bodybuilder uh, who's in bodybuilding competitions. Not everyone wants that kind of physique. Um, It's not, doesn't make sense for some people. And most people just want to look and feel better than they do right now. Uh, And some people just want more tone. They just want to perform better in their sport. Um, So, but with getting stronger, man, that can only benefit everyone. Uh, So here's why. Strength could actually benefit anyone. So one, it improves functionality. If you're stronger, it helps you perform any daily function or any sort of sport or any sort of weightlifting. It helps you just be strong enough to go through any type of movement or, or meet any kind of challenge that you're going to need to face day to day. And it makes any two type of movement easier. So let's say if, if, this, uh, <clears throat> if this couch was really challenging to lift and carry and move to a different spot uh, before, if you get stronger, it's going to be easier. So that's going to put you at less risk of hurting your back or something like that. 
Um, getting stronger improves your resistance to injury. If your body's stronger, it's going to be able to resist those forces put on it easier. Um, getting stronger improves your quality of life because, man, if I can get up off the floor because I'm strong enough to do that, that's going to improve my quality of life and it's going to help me have better longevity there. Um, it makes normal daily activities easier. I can pick up my kids easier. I can uh, bring in the groceries easier. I can climb up and down the stairs easier if I'm strong enough. Um, and resistance training improves your quality of life for longer into old age because it's going to help you maintain uh, a good, lean, strong muscle mass. It's going to help you maintain a good bone mass. And it's going to help you um, even have that functionality into old age. It's going to allow you to uh, be more functional as you get in those latter years of life whenever it's just you're not getting around as much. Um, but ultimately, working on strength, it maintains even your metabolism uh, it could be because if you're maintaining a lean mass of you know lean muscle and bone it's going to help you have a good metabolism in old age it's going to resist all the things in our life and our lifestyle that's going to um, tend to make us put on unwanted weight you know so but getting bigger or hypertrophy may benefit some but may not always be necessary so if you're in a sport where uh like a weight class matters you may not want to get bigger uh, if you're just trying to, if you're trying to be a long distance runner, you're trying to run a marathon, getting bigger may not actually benefit you, but getting stronger might actually benefit your running stride, might benefit your posture and resistance as you run a lot. Uh, getting bigger may be super great if you're just trying to increase your overall confidence. It might be super great if you're trying to, um, you know, like a man who wants to be more confident in himself, it might help him have that better confidence. Um, if you're trying to fill out your shirt a little bit to impress somebody, you know, um, or <clears throat> if you're trying to tone yourself up, some hypertrophy might be beneficial, especially if you're starting out pretty thin, you don't have a lot of muscle mass. And so in some cases, hypertrophy may be beneficial, especially if you're trying to compete for something and trying to look bigger and stronger if the look is important. Um, in some cases, it may not. And so where strength can be beneficial for everyone, hypertrophy is really case by case on what your goals are. Um, and so some people compete in sports where strength matters, um, but they have to make weight in a certain weight class. Um, this makes them want to get as strong as possible while sort of limiting the amount of hypertrophy they have. And that's where strength training really matters a lot for them. So this is not like bodybuilding um, or wrestling where you can fast and dehydrate before lifting competition because with maximal efforts, like if you're in a weightlifting competition or a strongman competition, um, then you know trying to really cut yourself down to make weight isn't gonna be beneficial. So having just sort of this consistency um, of strength training is gonna help you perform better. Uh, whereas like, yeah, even in, in wrestling sports, like a lot of hypertrophy might affect your ability to stay within a certain weight class. And so you want to get as strong as you can while maintaining a certain weight. Um, strongman competitions, you want to be as big and strong as possible. And so uh, those competitors will go through phases of hypertrophy, trying to get bigger and stronger um, and a lot of strength training, moving heavy weight on a regular basis. Uh, but to a degree, you know, mass moves mass. Eventually, if you want to keep getting stronger, those muscles are going to have to get bigger. You'll have to do at least some hypertrophy training. And so, like, you've never seen a small guy win the world's strongest man, right? It's always a pretty huge dude. Um, but even to women, uh, this issue may be especially important because a lot of women don't want to get big and bulky. They don't want hypertrophy. Um, some is okay, but they don't want a lot. So, a, for a woman, getting stronger might be beneficial because she's going to be more functional, be able to perform better, be able to be the woman that she wants to be, but she doesn't want to get huge. And getting stronger may help her tone up, uh, while hypertrophy might get her more bulky, bulky than she wants to be. And so it's important to, for both sexes to be able to understand like what are their goals and what type of training is going to help them get there. And so here's the difference in priorities of priorities programming whenever it comes to strength versus hypertrophy as far as like what percentage of weights you're going to be going for how heavy you're going to lift what's your sets and reps going to look like hypertrophy it's going to be anywhere from 60 to 80 percent of like a one rep max and so like the maximal weight that you can do doing 60 80 percent of that uh, for 12 to eight reps um, per set so and it's going to be a 
total of 12 to 16 sets in any given workout with five to eight different exercises. So that's going to get you, you know, there used, used to be a rule of like a try to get 300 reps in a total work, workout in a certain area. Um, like a general like upper body or lower body type workout or something like that. You're going to try to get 300 total reps or focusing on that, those muscle groups. And so that's 68% of your one rep max is pretty challenging, especially if you're doing eight to 12 reps of those and it's, and across five to different, five to eight different exercises, that's going to add up. You get pretty fatigued. And what that does is that really breaks down your muscles so they build up bigger. And so with hypertrophy, you got to break the muscle down. You got to even to the point of failure sometimes where uh, it gets so uncomfortable that it's breaking that muscle down. So as it builds itself back, it's going to build back bigger. Strength, you're going to be doing a lot less sets and reps because it's neurologically super demanding. Strength is more about recruiting those muscle fibers that are already there um, and trying to get really efficient at recruiting all of them that are there, like not leaving any out. So like when you're first starting out in a strength program, you're probably going to have some huge gains because you're learning a movement. You're, you're getting more efficient with the muscle fibers you already have without increasing their size at all. So in strength training, you're going to have often function in the 80 to 90 percent range um, you definitely dip down in you know the 60 to 79 percent um, especially if you're trying to you know give your neurological system a little bit of a rest but um, you're going to get your strongest stimulus if you're in that 80 to 90 percent range and you're going to be doing you know one to four different exercises getting three to seven sets of just like three to five reps per set and so that's a different volume there because it's much more demanding it's heavier weight um, and even working in different tempos and working on negatives and pauses and um, working on speed out of the movement uh, or the concentric portion of the lift is going to be super beneficial for your strength and so decreasing the percentage more on the tempo work if you're going to be going really slow in your reps is going to be more beneficial for those because you just can't move really heavy weight really slow um, so all this does is it overloads the central nervous system to be more efficient with that. And this is why you have to be a little bit careful with strength training. If you do it too often, if you're going at those high percentages too often, you're just going to wear out your central nervous system and put yourself at a little bit of risk for injury if you're doing it too often. So, uh, no more than like three, four sessions a week, but spacing it out as far as upper lower priority is going to be good for keeping your joints healthy, keeping your central nervous system healthy. So not going too heavy too often. But strength training is legit. Like because the the volume is relatively low, you can work it in pretty regularly um, if you're not doing too many sets and reps overall. So uh, that's the difference between that. So hypertrophy, you have a ton of volume at a little bit lower percentage, and you're trying to really break yourself down, which is why you get super sore when you're doing a hypertrophy type training. But in strength training, you may not be sore at all, but you just feel like tired. You're like, oh man, I just don't know if I have it in me today, which is good to listen to because if you're tired going into a strength workout, it's not wise to just go and try to move a lot of heavy weight. But you can see the difference in how you might feel. You might still feel fresh. You could go out and do an endurance type wad uh, workout of the day um, after doing some strength work um, as a way to sort of rest your central nervous system and, and not overload yourself too much. And so it builds your overall fitness pretty well. Uh, whereas a hypertrophy, you might be so sore you can't move. You just got to do some active recovery to try to get yourself going again. So, uh, But what do they both have in common? Well, you got to train the big muscle groups to get a maximal hormonal response. And so if you're just doing like a leg press, a bunch of isolation exercises, um, you're not going to get the biggest gains. Like the the best bodybuilders in the world, they still do squats and deadlifts. Like they use those big muscle groups to get a big hormonal response to be able to get the muscle gains that they want. Um, and so whether that's doing a you know less reps at a higher weight for strength training or for hypertrophy training, doing more reps at a lower percentage of your one rep max, um, both types of training you need to require you need to train the big muscle groups you need to be doing functional movements you know free weight type movements ones that are going to be engaging your entire body because that's going to get a huge hormonal response it's going to help you get the gains you want but both of these increase your overall metabolism as they challenge your body to adapt um, and develop 
to meet the demand you're placing on it. And so, yeah, you got to change up the exercises that you do. You got to change up the, the overall workouts that you're doing. So you don't get just totally adapted to that because your body's quick at adapting. It's pretty good at it. Um, and you'll eventually plateau and that's a sign that you need to change things up, but both do increase your overall metabolism. And so you do get stronger in both. You do get stronger if you do hypertrophy training, um, to a degree. Uh, but if you're doing just strength training, you're going to get stronger to a greater degree until you sort of hit a plateau where you'd have to increase muscle size, uh, in order to get, continue to get stronger. And so, but how do they differ? Hypertrophy training is much higher in volume, as you guys have already heard. Hypertrophy training, you want to intentionally overload the muscles so you get that burn. You want to burn it out a little bit. Um, you get more sore from hypertrophy training in strength. It doesn't break your break down your muscle as much. It does wear out your central nervous system more, so you have to be mindful of that. Um, and you may feel more physically tired from serious strength training than you would get from hypertrophy training. So. Um, take that into consideration, especially if you have a lot of high stress demands on your life that are already wearing you out. Strength training may, may not be something you can do as often as someone who has less stress or things that are making them tired uh, throughout their daily life. And so, um, so how does this meet you where you're at right now? So just training, let's say you're just trying to get a little leaner or athletic or functional, uh, doing a mix of strength training and some more aerobic type circuits or training um, could be super beneficial for you. So that means you'll be moving some heavier loads for less reps and then doing some either steady cardio or some higher intensity exercises like interval type exercises and much lighter weights where you try to go as, as intense as you can um, so that you're not going to give yourself any hypertrophy there. And so what if you want to be a, a power lifter or Olympic lifter? Well, you want to aim for a weight class and prioritize strength over hypertrophy if you're in that category. And especially once you're at that, uh, you know, really close to that weight class, you want to be really maintaining that strength or growing that strength. And so the only, once you hit that weight class, um, benchmark there, once you're at that boundary there, the only way you, you can continue to get stronger is by getting leaner as well. And so like, if you're trying to stay within a certain weight class, you're going to have to get as strong as you can while being as lean as you can, um, to a certain degree to where you're able to compete in your weight class. And so you may have to make a decision to jump a weight class if you want to continue to get stronger, if it comes to that. Um, and so what if you want to be like a, a strong man? Um, you want to eat quality fuel, but you want to get as big as strong as possible. So you're going to have to go in phases of a, a planned out, well thought out periodized program of hypertrophy and strength training while, uh, limiting the cardio because you that's not a priority in, in strongman training. You want to have a certain amount of cardiovascular, like which, which is going to be a more short burst, like high-intensity high interval training, uh, but it's going to be largely just on the strength, you know, and, and trying to get those muscles as big and strong as possible while still staying functional and mobile uh, to a degree. So in hypertrophy training may be days that you're trying to decrease the intensity to allow your central nervous system to recover so you can get it in another strength session if you're trying to be a strong man but what if you want to be a bodybuilder and increase size um well you're definitely gonna have to bias more towards hypertrophy training than um you are going to be towards strength training so you might have you know one or two different strength exercises you're working on trying to get stronger uh, to get that hormonal response but the rest of your workouts are going to be all hypertrophy based. You're going to be doing a little bit uh, more submaximal weights. You're going to be doing a whole lot of volume and trying to break your body down and trying to get it bigger on a regular basis. Uh, you may have one to two significant strength days in a week to stimulate your hormones to promote muscle growth. Uh, but outside of that, it's mostly just like the lower percentage, higher volume you're trying to get. You're really trying to burn your muscles out. And so, uh, now you can kind of see the difference between strength and hypertrophy. You can see that, you know, strength is much more about like, I want to move better. I want to be able to resist injury better. I want to be able to move myself or an object better. Hypertrophy is like, like I want to get bigger. I want to get stronger too, but I really, I want to get bigger. I want to look better. I want my muscles to pop out um, and press. And so you can see the difference there. And so consider this today. Like if, have you been confused about that in the past? Have you been um, considering strength training as hypertrophy training 
Well, I hope now you can see that strength training is not necessarily the hypertrophy training. You only get a minimal amount of hypertrophy whenever you're doing strength training. By hypertrophy training, you do get stronger, but the goal is to get bigger, um, to increase that muscle size. And so I hope that today this really helps you understand the difference and why um, a different bias program and in getting to understand the difference between how that's programmed, the volume that you'd be looking at. Like if you're moving heavy weights, if you're really burning yourself out, then you can expect some increase in muscle growth. If you're moving a really lightweight and you're doing tons of volume, like I'm talking like huge sets, that's going to be more of an endurance type cardio exercise. You're going to be breathing hard. But if you're moving a really heavy weight for just a few reps, that's more of a strength exercise. And that's beneficial for people as, as long as you're moving it with good technique and good form under, under good coaching and supervision. So, I hope this helps you guys understand a little bit better of strength versus hypertrophy training. And this is beneficial for anyone to understand because I want you to know like how you can be strong, how you can be functional. But also, if you want to put on a little bit of muscle, you know what kind of hypertrophy training you can do. So, good stuff, and we'll catch you guys on the